Our next guest actually inspired this show theme. It's it's kind of incredible that by listening to people com- write and compose original music, I suddenly thought how many people in the world really have always dreamed of writing a song or a poem for that matter, or an essay or composing that poem into a song with someone who could actually help. Drew Lawrence is a singer, songwriter, and as I refer to him, the producer of music and dreams. So welcome to the show, Drew. We're so happy to have you. Thank you, Lauren. I'm happy to be here. It's a pleasure. And I really am excited to share what you're doing with our Good Day audience because I, I, I deeply believe that we all have dreams inside us, whether it's a song or a book or a painting or a dance, whatever we dream of doing that we may not even realize we dream it yet. Given the opportunity to hear about how others have done it and where it's led to has been pretty amazing. One of our earlier guests was a first time author at 83 and she was talking about her last year on tour and what it's led to. I mean, just incredible, incredible stuff. So you and I met in Nashville when I literally took on an exercise at uh, Roger Love's Sing for Your Soul workshop, and you had worked with a number of those people on writing and then composing an original piece and then performing. And so you do a lot of other things, though. So bring us up to how you got to where you are now. You got it. Well, let's see. It all started a little over 20 years ago. I went to Berkeley College of Music, and uh, after college, I decided, well, I really think I'm going to give this a shot, this whole music industry thing. And and I told my fiance at the time, who's my wife now of 21 years, I said, "Hey, maybe in a few years we'll go to Los Angeles and and I'll I'll I'll, I'll see see what I can do in the music industry." And and she looked out the window and the, the the snow was blowing sideways and it had been the coldest winter in Boston since like 1850. And she said, "How about we go now?" <laughs> And so we did. We headed to Los Angeles and I didn't know anybody in town. I just threw myself out there and I started singing in open mics and and just getting to know the community. And I started playing with anybody who needed uh, keyboards or backing vocals. And I started writing with everybody. And this is the advice I give to to artists uh, of all ages at any time in their life. You just have to jump in. You just have to jump in and do a little bit each day. And, and so that's what I did. And, and, and over the years, I, I started uh, making connections with, with people that were all kind of here. You know, L.A. is one of those cities where a lot of people come with big dreams and they're all they're all here to to hopefully achieve amazing things. So I met some great folks along the way that that led to more relationships. And eventually um, one of the projects I worked on I had a shot. We got placed on a television show with a song we wrote. Uh, the song was called Jar of Hearts. The artist was is Christina Perry. And when that song got placed on TV, it changed our lives forever. Um, immediately, um, it charted on the Billboard charts that week with no record play and or no record labels and no radio play. And um, all of a sudden, the whole industry was coming after us. And I signed a publishing deal uh, and spent the next seven years going around the world writing with pop artists. And during this time, I was writing nearly 200 songs a year. And it was a very prolific time. And it was, at the time, I didn't realize what it was preparing me for. But now I I have this amazing opportunity to help people from all walks of life tell their stories and and write their legacies and and discover songwriting so what those seven or eight years were was reps for me writing you know over uh a thousand songs to get uh prepared so that now i can help people um you know discover this for themselves so so after i did the the pop hustle if you will for such a long time i've now transitioned into helping people from all walks of life artists at all different ages and it's been a really exciting 
journey. And when we met in Nashville, I was working with uh, 10 people who had never written a song ever before in their lives. And they were getting on stage, right, to perform this new song. It was an amazing experience. It was an amazing experience for all of us to recognize that they had done that and that you literally within just a few hours with each of them, what you were able to pull out from the inside such emotion and storytelling and in some case, great humor, in some cases, great humor. I mean, there was everything and you were just able, as you said, having done it as many times as you have, you really can just jump to the heart of things. So it was, it was truly amazing. Uh, the rest of us sang, which for me was the do the thing that scares you most, right? And I was fine to take a, a song off the list. <laughs> I'm not sure that composing would have helped my anxiety get through the, <laughs> get through the event. But we were so impressed. And I was so excited to know that you are out there now offering this as an opportunity to the world to say, write your legacy, sing your legacy. Like, if this is a dream you have, let's do it. So how is that opening up for you? Uh, it, it's been amazing. And, and it's been some of the most rewarding work I've ever done. And what brings me tremendous joy uh, is seeing people that have, have never explored these hidden talents and, and, and to see them come to life. I have uh, a number of people that are trying this for the first time later in life and it, seeing their childlike excitement as they discover that they they do have this this instrument that they can learn how to use and and that it's fun and that it's it's it brings joy and and inspiration it, it's it's really it's really rewarding work and uh, as i mentioned it's it's some of my favorite work i've done in my career is seeing this transformation with people I think it really taps into the inner child in all of us before we were told we couldn't sing, before we were told we were tone deaf, before <laughs> all the befores. So I know people ask you so many questions that we would all have, like, can anyone really learn to sing? This is uh, ab absolutely is the answer. And uh, to me, it's a, it's absolutely a proven science because I've been doing this um for so long, and I've just never met anybody who didn't learn how to sing. And not just how to sing, but how to sing and sound nice, to sound good when they sing. So it's 100% possible for anybody, and here's why. Because each one of us is born with this amazing instrument. Uh, if you think about this, there's, I think, nearly 8 billion people on the planet, and no two people have the same voice. And when you think about that, your voice is one of the most special. It, it's, it is the most special voice on the planet. There's not another one like it. So what uh, is the case for a lot of people is they don't know how to access their instrument and how to use it properly. And, and, and one of the, the biggest issues is people don't understand their wheelhouse, where their voice sounds great or, or, or where their range is, if you will. So they go to karaoke and they try to sing you know, a, a, a male tries to sing Journey, you know, Steve Perry, one of those really high or one of those those 80s hairband songs with the high vocal. And that's not their range. And they sound bad up there because they haven't they're, they're not singing in the right key. They haven't learned where their special spot is. But here's the truth. The truth is everybody does have a sweet spot, a part, a place in their voice where it blossoms and it sounds great. And we just need to learn where our spot is. And then we need to hone in on that and develop it. And then I, I have not yet met one person who uh, didn't learn how to sing when they had the interest and they were willing to put in the reps to, uh, to develop it. So it, along with the learning to sing, and I can only I imagine that that discovery for someone who believed they could not sing all their lives, that suddenly discovering that sweet spot is kind of magical. I, I can't I can't even imagine how you sitting across from them and watching that light bulb go off. It's got to be brilliant. It's really fun. I, I absolutely love what I do. And I, I feel like I get to to be this this uh, 
uh, you know, sculptor with their with their voice, and and uh, and I get excited when they have breakthroughs, and when all of a sudden they 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 learn that they have this sound that they didn't realize they could make before, and and seeing that that progress is especially uh, folks that you know have given it some some time to to really to really develop people that have you know it's it's certainly not. I just want to you know be clear, it's not an overnight thing. There is work involved, but. What I'm seeing is I'm seeing quick results. I'm seeing people with within a year of doing the work where they they they've transformed into somebody that's that that can use their voice confidently. And if there's an opportunity to sing karaoke or an opportunity to sing happy birthday or whatever the occasion may be, that they have a new relationship with their voice. And it it's it's really fun to be a part of that journey to help them discover what they're capable of. The other part that I absolutely loved was that you showed us, all of us, that everyone can write a song. Everyone has a song inside. Everyone who has us, who has lived for about a minute and a half, <laughs> can find a story within that they want to tell. And with some guidance, really turned it into um, just a legacy piece of work. How, how do you actually write a song? Well, first of all, I want to say, yeah, some of my favorite songs I've I've co-written with 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 folks are you know with people who've lived a little bit of life. You know, one thing about the pop industry is for so many years I was working with you know artists that are kind of you know younger. They're twenty one, they're twenty two, and and um, boy, that's just a lot of songs about people having relationships in their twenties. And I did get a little bit tired. <laughs> of that subject matter. So getting a chance to write legacy pieces of lessons that are learned and um, experiences that, that happened just provided me with, with more depth and more material to work with. So it's been really, uh, really enjoyable. I, I really, I, I'm really loving this part of my career of writing songs that are, that are, uh, you know, a little bit more reflective. Um, and so, your question is how do you get started? And really all you need is to start with a story. And that's the most important thing. Why? So why are we writing the song? What is the story? And I tell people the best way to think about your story is to you know, think about the people in your life and, and think about the experiences you've had. I had one, I had one um, a friend of mine that came and said, you know, I just don't have a story. I don't really have a story. I, I have my job, I have my hobbies and I have my dogs and I have my husband he's number four on the list <laughs> it's just so funny I thought that sounds was, like a country western song waiting yeah. to happen. <laughs> well, I was like that's that right there is a song you're right and honey I love you but you're number four after the dogs <laughs> um so you know and and so we, we 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 started talking about her her life and I I just started asking questions so so this even if you don't think you have a story and it starts with a conversation. Uh, if we got to go right to the very beginning, and um, I asked her where she was from, and she was she was from San Francisco, and I we we talked about the amazing times that she grew up in San Francisco, and at, at the time in her life, Jefferson Airplane was like rehearsing in a garage down the street from her, and Carlos Santana was in another garage down the street rehearsing, and it was this amazing city full of vibrant life and love, and. And, and then I said, well, how, how's the, the what's this, the, the um, condition of that city right now? And, you know, the tone turned that she, it's a little sad for her to visit because San Francisco is going through some challenging times right now. So we wrote this beautiful love uh, song, love story, a letter to San Francisco. That was where we got her story. And it, and it, it included her childhood and also how she feels now looking back at the city and, and, and realizing that there's still hope but she's hoping that the city can turn its a corner and come back to its 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 you know glory of olden days. And um, we 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 wrote. So here's the next step in writing a song. We came up with the title, "The Painted Ladies," which are the famous homes that are 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 in San Francisco. Those old Victorian homes. They're on that that show Full House in the beginning. You see those. Right. Homes. And so um, she she's talking to the painted ladies and what they've seen as the city has has changed over the years. So we came up with a title that kind of represented the story, which was fun. It's like, we're gonna write a San Francisco song. We're gonna, we'll, we'll use these painted ladies as our as our hook, as our title. And 
it, it was it was really fun. So we start with the story and then a title. And one exercise I take people through uh, when they work with me is is uh, sit down and 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 write a few titles uh, each day. It doesn't take very long, right? And it could be it could be an object that's that's in your house, um, like a, a vase of flowers. Miley Cyrus had a pretty big hit song called Flowers. So there's there's a title, and then you start thinking about what could be the story behind that behind that object. Um, so that's one of the exercises. But the shorter answer is a story and a title, and we're good to go. We can start writing a song with that. I love that. And I know that people are now thinking, I can hear them thinking, wow, I I can do that. I can yeah. absolutely do that. And one of the things that I want to share with the audience before I ask you where they can find more information is that you, in fact, are working on writing and recording your own personal history, story, legacy. And so you are going to be releasing your first solo album later this year. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, I finished the album and it's been mastered. And um, so now I'm in the process of, of putting together a business plan uh, so that I can release it and, and hopefully get it to, to as many people as possible. But this is a 20 year dream of mine. And even though I've been in the industry and I've, I've been developing other artists and I perform in a band uh, called the Dales where, where I'm, I'm, I'm one of the band members and, and we tour and that, and that's a load of fun. It's a three part harmony band, um, a little bit throwback, like Crosby, Stills and Nash and Fleetwood Mac, that thing. And, and that's such a blast. And I love my bandmates and I love that whole project, but it's, it's a more of a collective project where we're writing about different, um, different topics, but I wanted to create my own body of work that was my stories about the people that are closest to me in my life, my family, and and some of the lessons I've learned that I want to I want to share with the world and and with and and future generations. And so our legacy isn't just the people uh, in our lives, but also what we've learned. So uh, you don't need to have a partner or kids to have a legacy to leave. There's so much more to our experience in life and just 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 the lessons we've learned and the messages we want to share. And so, so this, this project has been really dear to my heart and it's, it's, it's been something that um, some of the songs do go back uh, a long time. One of the songs is over 20 years old. And the point there is that it's never too late to follow through on ideas that maybe you put on the back burner um, uh, and, and it's not like, well, I should have done that, but I didn't, there, it's, it's like, if, if, if we're, if we're here and we, we got the breath in us, there's right. still time to, to, to feel, follow through on, on these ideas. And, and so that also has been, has felt really good to, you know, wrap that up, wrap up some ideas that were loose ends that were sitting around for so long and, and to, to see them to the finish line. Uh, so yes, I'm very excited. I plan on performing the album uh, on tour next year. And, and uh, it, we'll probably start with the single this fall. Very excited. So Drew, where can our viewers find you, find more information about your programs and your music? Well, first of all, I have a website, drewlawrencemusic.com. And I will be giving a, um, uh, I give free workshops uh, every month. The next one is July 11th, which is coming up soon. Um, and then uh, there'll be another one in in August. And at these workshops, you can learn more about everything we're talking about today. And I show examples. Um, I do group classes. Uh, the Dales Band also has a website if you want to check them out. And also on Spotify, um, the Dales Band is, is there as well if you want to hear some music. And um, yeah, those are the best places to find me. On Instagram, Drew Lawrence Songs. You can see see uh, more about me and and, and the, the, the people I'm writing songs about, which would be all my family members <laughs> as well. <laughs> I'm sure they're thrilled about that, but they'll be proud when it's all done. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Drew, thank you so much for making the time to come visit with us and share this amazing, amazing opportunity with our viewers. I, I really am excited for people to start digging deep into their souls and say, you're right. 
it's never too late and I've always wanted to do this and here's the person who can help me get it to the finish line. Thank you and we'll look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much for having me, Lauren. It's been a real pleasure. And we'll be right back.